Hey my loves, welcome back to Ravina at Home. Today I'm super excited to show you our newly renovated bathrooms. We renovated five bathrooms. Each one was torn apart, we changed the pipes, added new tiling, and even completely changed the orientation of one bathroom. It took weeks, but the end result is so worth the hassle. I just wanted to take this opportunity to share the thought process with all of you in the case you are planning a makeover of your own. The very first tip to remodeling your bathrooms is to have uniformity. I am no property wizard, but I would not want a house where each bathroom has a completely different style. I would want some flow of style instead. Let's begin with my dad's bathroom. This bathroom has the minimum changes because my dad is a creature of habit. We replaced the old tub with a new one as it is the master bathroom. One would expect a long bath. And we added these safety bars. Better safe than sorry, right? The extra space between the bathtub and the wall was used to create a box up, which is also known as recessed shelves or a niche. Every bathroom is complete with this personal bidet spray. It's sufficient to say it's super hygienic. And of course, a toilet paper holder. This bathroom has this small shower area, which has three different shower settings. I'll tell you more about it when we visit my bathroom. We have also added these plates to cover the unsightly holes of the pipes in the tiles. The cabinet and countertops are the same as my bathroom, so we can talk about that later in the video as well. You can see how much plumbing is involved, so a tip here is to always use high quality pipes. Don't cut corners or expense on the pipes. Once they are sealed under these tiles, you will have to hack a hell of a lot and it's going to cause a lot of frustration in the future. In master bedrooms, you can add a feature wall. This creates a more luxurious feel. It cuts out the monotony and it adds some interest. Usually, one would do a wall that is prominent when you enter the bathroom. What you see in pictures or even at the store might not look quite the same on your walls or floor. So my tip is to buy some sample pieces so you know exactly how it looks. And this is our bathroom. It used to be identical to the one upstairs, but we removed the bathtub. So now we have got a much bigger shower area and I added this bench for convenience. I can sit or I can just put my soaps and scrubs here while using them. If you want to make any major changes, now is the time. So plan well. You might not get another chance for a while again. Next, let's talk tiling. Tiling is one of the most prominent parts of the bathroom. It sets the tone. Tiles come in many sizes, but it's easier to stick with something average size, such as these two by one tiles. Larger tiles are best for larger bathrooms, while mosaic can be very difficult to clean. When tiling, make sure the first full tile is correctly placed, as the entire tiling will depend on that. Also ensure that the floor and wall tiles are aligned. These little things are going to determine the end result. Where there are tiles, there is grouting. Grouting can make a huge difference to the overall look. You can go for a contrast, or like us, you can use the lightest color in the tile as your grouting color. In some countries, people tile to the top, while others tile it usually between three and five feet high. Both can look lovely, but I find fully tiled walls easier to clean. Tiles need to have a proper edging, or it will look unfinished. The best and most durable method, in my opinion, is using a Schluter strip or a corner beading. This gives the corners a rounded and clean finish. These strips come in many, many colors, which makes it easy to match. Waterworks, showers, and faucets need a mention too. For the fixtures, I wanted gold, but the guys won. 
I actually gave in because there were many more fixture options available in stainless steel than gold. They don't have to know that. The fixtures are the same as in the other bathrooms. We have the bidet spray, the toilet paper holder, the faucet, all with the same rectangular design. Make your bathroom more luxurious by adding features that are interesting and practical. What we have added are these niches. Here we have used the tiles from the accent wall inside the niche as well. To the niche, I have added shelves to maximize the vertical space. These are great for essentials and also for display. These are completely water safe because it's tile and glass, no wood at all. To get an idea of the gap between the shelves, you can either match the grouting line or measure your tallest bottle and add about two inches of extra space. For the shower panels, the clear glass is almost invisible. We have also maximized the height by using eight foot panels finished with rods at the top as a safety measure. With it being clear and tall, it avoids a vertical line in the middle therefore avoiding visual clutter. And it shows off the visual of the full bathroom. We decided to have three separate showers in every bath. We have the rainfall, which is an amazing way to wash your hair. We also have the hand shower, which comes with a holder. And another one we added is this faucet. I like the look of this waterfall faucet and it's a great addition especially to wash your feet. The cistern is concealed and all you see are these two buttons. But do not worry, there is a loose tile up here that can be removed for any repairs. Another feature in every bathroom is the biggest mirror possible. I know small mirrors above the sink and vanity are the trend and it looks great, but a larger mirror can create an illusion of space and can give you a beautiful focal point even in the smallest of spaces. We opted for frameless mirrors so we could add LED light strips behind the mirror. These can be switched from daylight, which is great for makeup, to a hue of yellow light to suit your mood. Another play with lighting is we have added plaster ceiling to introduce trough lighting. We do have the bright lights as well. There is a little controversy over having power sockets in the bathroom but we decided to go for it as this area is reasonably far from the water. We have added universal sockets in every bathroom. So no matter what the shape of the plug is, it will fit. I love that. Next are the surfaces. We have used solid surface because I personally find it the most durable and easy to clean. Again, I went for a sparkly white so it catches the light, reflects it and always looks clean. Under that, we have the cabinet and the drawers. Each of the bathroom cabinet finish was chosen to suit the tiles. Here we have used the same light color as the tiles, so it looks and feels more airy. This is called low contrast. You can of course go for a bolder, more moody look, but this is what I'm comfortable with. But seriously, the bold look works great in already dark windowless bathrooms, like you will see in our powder room. We have floating cabinets well above the floor to prevent any water damage. It also makes the bathroom look bigger as you see more floor. The original shower area is now empty, so I have just added these shelves. I generally like having things that I grab being out, so this will probably work very well for me. I'll actually know more when I organize the bathroom. I'm sure you've heard of chair clothes. My husband has many chair clothes, not clean enough for the cabinet, but not dirty enough to be washed. Our chair clothes will now hang right here. We don't have a towel rod in here, as I prefer a hook near the window. My husband uses the shower door handle, which we deliberately fitted horizontally on the outer side as a rod. These two smaller bathrooms are identical. We have the marble vein tiles matched with a grey. The cabinet design is actually similar for all the bathrooms. As you can see, most of the fixtures are by Johnson Suisse, but some pieces are not. We had to opt for fixtures with a similar design. Having all fixtures in the same finish 
with the same style makes everything so much more cohesive. These bathrooms have a triple shower as well and the oversized mirror with mood lighting. In the smaller bathrooms, this recessed shelving has been fitted behind the water closet above the cistern to maximize the vertical space above it while maintaining the same style for all bathrooms. In these two bathrooms, we do have towel rods. Having the towel rods under the window makes it easy to dry towels quickly, preventing odor and mildew. And this is our powder room. This powder room has no daylight. It has windows that open to a basement corridor. We have gone for darker colors to play up the drama rather than to hide it. Unlike the bathrooms, we did change the style slightly, but kept the basics the same. We wanted this powder room to look more like the kitchen that leads into this bathroom. We maintained the same marble look as the kitchen and pantry, and we also used the same sink and faucet as in the kitchen. Here, I got my gold fixtures. The recessed shelves are replicated here as well, but I opted for a tall shelf in between to display some larger decor in tune with adding drama. Planning the little details will give you the results you want. This hook here is ideal for hanging your jewelry or a bag if you need to. The vanity area here is tiny. The countertop is the same, but the cabinet finish and flooring is bolder. In contrast to the vanity, the mirror is huge. Now this powder room is pretty small, so this tall mirror creates a sense of space. I like that the reflection of the kitchen makes the space look bigger and brighter. A little extra play with light. We already have the lighting behind the mirror, but we also added mood lighting. There was a little extra space here. There was no shower here before, but with some planning, we redid the plumbing to add the shower. No one actually showers here but it's an ideal space for me to wash bulky kitchen items and refrigerator shelves and drawers. It's also a very convenient area to wash Zoe. And I added a faucet because it makes it more convenient to fill a pail or bucket. These are the changes and additions we have made to all our bathrooms. And I really hope you have found these tips useful. These are the things I wish someone had told me to help me figure out stuff while planning the bathroom makeovers. So if you're wanting to remodel your bathrooms, use these tips. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm quite the expert now. And now that the bathrooms are ready, it's time to organize. So be sure to watch the bathroom organization video next week for more bathroom ideas. And until the next video, this is Ravina saying, happy homemaking.